These are beautiful. The bill, $70 for lilies. They are not a present, and their destination is not a pretty vase. Klaus bought them to tear them apart. And we're set. And he had to get up early to go buy them. 7 a.m. to be exact, after just one cup of coffee. There is no time to waste because the good stuff sells quickly in New York City's flower district, a slice of midtown Klaus Enrique knows well. He's a regular here, and an artist known for his provocative works on clay and organic matter, like these reinterpretations of the paintings by Giuseppe Archimboldo from the 16th century. But it isn't just royals and nods to the great Renaissance masters. Klaus breathes life into sculpture and turns pop culture from this and other galaxies into still life, with flowers, vegetables, and even animal flesh, from his Mona Lisa to his Terminator. Long before the pandemic, his work had also helped him cope with the stresses of living in today's America. The way things are, and uh, I think it's just the way I feel right now, you know, with everything that is going on in the world. Um, there's a lot of despair and, and sadness and anger. But getting political has cost him sales. I guess I was a little bit naive. Um, but it's okay, you know, it's a, it's a decision that I, I made and I was aware that there were going to be consequences. So I would do it all over again. Making things worse, he says the post-COVID market is one in which collectors are more likely to buy at auctions than directly from artists. They're just not buying art because they're concerned about the economy, they're concerned about how things are going. And for them, it's discretionary spending that they don't need to, to spend. There are buyers like Sarah who are just as passionate about art as Klaus. But with additional restrictions for social distancing on gallery shows, on top of reduced spending, she also hopes that the looming crisis doesn't silence creativity. And he does some political work that um, I find to be really important right now. And I hope that he's able to continue doing this and that collectors will seek him out and support him and support um, all the political um, beliefs that he has and that we all have. And um, it's art is something that's keeping us going right now. For the Manhattan-based sculptor and photographer, there is solace in knowing he can rely on his information technology background to survive. In the meantime, the graveyard of bones made of clay under his work table will continue to come alive, one pedal at a time. Julio Cesar Garcia, New York One.